One of the worst places to be during the height of the rioting here in Los Angeles was inside a commercial building, any building, but particularly inside a liquor store. And that's exactly where we are, in a liquor store. And Charles Jones is in his liquor store, and that's where he says he will stay until the rioting is completely over. Remember, her, we're not going to be here later, so make sure you, huh? you got what you need. Charles Jones opened his Compton area liquor store located deep inside the riot zone, knowing full well the danger. It was inescapable. It's been a long day. And it could get longer. Jones says his business was spared because he has respect and a good relationship oh, with the very people in the area who were rioting. I was happy to see my place stand. But all around Jones's store, other businesses, large and small, weren't so lucky. We watched a stunned shop owner standing by helplessly, visibly shaken and unable to protect his clothing store. What can we do? Hey, hey, hey! We thought hey, being a black business was survival, but I'd say, what can we do? I mean, how does it make you feel to be here seeing what's happening? Oh, well. It makes you mad naturally because you work hard to build something up. And, you know, your own people destroy it. So, excuse me, what, what do you think they're after? What is it that they're after? Just, at this point, I don't think anyone knows what they're after. I think that they're just caught up in the moment. Well, I understand the frustration. I'm sure like everybody else, but, you know, this hurts. This, this really hurts. They vandalized. They took everything. They really trashed the store. That was about 4 o'clock this morning I came down. All the merchandise was taken. Bars were broken. Windows were broken. So How they took things out, everything out. How do you feel about that? Right now, I'm numb. Put the fire out! Put the fire out! Put the fire out! Business after business after business was helpless to stop the onslaught. If it wasn't looters, it was fire that shut them down. <laughs> Fire after fire after fire kept breaking out all over the city, primarily in businesses, and businesses which probably will not be able to reestablish themselves once the riot is over. This is an extended edition of the morning show and front page. We feel the community needs this. A local radio station owned by Stevie Wonder fielded a full day of calls as people tried vainly to make sense of what was going on. Come on, what are we doing to our community? Outside, now brazen looters attacked commerce at will, bank teller machines included. Excuse me, what are you taking out of that? <laughs> what do you got? What are you taking? Is your store? store. <laughs> Sir, just behind you, there are a dozen people looting a shop. What's going on? No, those are all the owners over there. They're repairing all that stuff. John Rob Mike's back here? Yeah. Yeah, they're all owners there. They are all owners. Yeah, we we're already over there. But in a sea of chaos, smoke, and looting, Charles Jones's store is an island. Oh, there's tension and violence here, too. Outside, in fact, a man was shot to death in his car. Was that related to the riot, do you think? Yeah, definitely. Because it was a Korean man driving down the street. And uh, they shot him. But inside, Charles and his son Michael tried to do business, if not as usual, as close as they can get. See, because you burn me down, I've got six other families that are dependent upon me, people that work for me. You burn down um, Harriet's beauty shop, she's got some operators in there, they out of work. See, and the residual effect isn't going to be felt until it's payday. We're standing in Midtown Los Angeles now, several miles from South Central LA, the core of this whole problem and where things started. And as you can see behind me, the building is engulfed in flames. There are no firefighters around anywhere. It's a situation that's on almost every block. The firefighters can't even begin to answer all the needs. The fire department received more than 3,000 emergency calls by early this morning, but with hundreds of blazes, firefighters were a bit overwhelmed. Number one, it's ridiculous what's going on. Number two, it's tough for us to do the job the way we're trained to do it, because we're spread so thin. Captain Kephart has been on the job since the riots began. He says there were very few victories as arsonists blackened the city. 
Well, a lot of guys here are going to see more fires today and tonight than they've seen in 10 years. We've been, we've fought four fires already in uh, four and a half, five hours. So, it's ever, crazy. But that's not all that's crazy. Firefighters, usually seen as the Red Cross of Flames, have become the target of violence, even though they obviously had nothing to do with the Rodney King verdict. Still, they've been besieged by rocks and bottles and, in some cases, gunshots. It's the first time in 14 and a half years that I've never felt like we've always been the good guys. People always want to. It's the first time in my career that I've ever felt like a lot of these people aren't happy to see us here, and that's unfortunate. As many as a thousand fires ravaged areas of Los Angeles and dark plumes of smoke striped the sky a whiskey brown. Travelers flying into the city could see smoke as far as 70 miles away. Battalion Chief Duncan Baird shook his head in disbelief as he surveyed some of the damage. Targets included furniture stores and corner delis, markets and video shops. The fires quickly spread to homes. I'm guessing there's probably 30 or 40 apartments in there, and those people are going to be out of, out of a home. It's really sad. And as one of the structures collapsed, Baird seemed resigned to the partial futility of it all. This building's going to probably going to burn to the ground. If and when it does or we're able to put the fire out, then we just have to move on. We'll be reassigned to another fire somewhere else. Many of those fighting the flames are longtime veterans of the department, men like Battalion Chief John Gamret, who fought fires during the Watts riot in 1965. Well, I was here during the original Watts riots, and it's much worse now. I think more structures are burned, it's more widespread, there's more looting, and there's more hostility. And how is Gamret dealing with the overwhelming situation? Well, it's just uh, part of the job. It's just something you have to do, and you try to isolate yourself. What's going on right now isn't right. 36 teams of firefighters from cities around California were en route to help the county's 1,700 firefighters. But that news didn't seem to bolster the exhausted troops. It's a holocaust. That's, that's all you can say. Hopefully it won't last long.